Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. This is Rachel Colton of RNC and today I'm going to be showing you how to make this macrame mandala or wreath. To complete this project you're going to need a metal hoop. I'm going to be using a 10 inch or 25.4 centimeter floral hoop from the craft store. You're also going to need your rope or your string. I'm going to be using three millimeter single strand cotton string from knotandrope.com. I'm going to be using 84 pieces of string cut to approximately 40 inches. You're also going to need a sharp pair of scissors and a tape measure to cut your strings and also to trim your fringe at the end. If you choose to brush out your fringe, you're going to want a fine tooth comb made of either metal or plastic. And if you want to hang your project on the door or the wall, you can use a fabric stiffener to keep the fringe in place. I'm going to be using Beacon Stiffen Stuff Fabric Stiffening Spray. If you use fabric stiffener, make sure you have some cardboard or newspaper to protect your surface. I'm also going to be using some painter's tape today to hold my project in place to keep it from moving around or making noise while I film. So let's get started. For the first portion of our design, we need to attach six of our strings using what's called a lark's head knot. To form a lark's head knot, you want to take your first piece of string and line up the loose ends. Then you want to find your way to center, which will now have a loop. You're going to take this loop over and behind your metal hoop, pulling it down about an inch or so. Then take your loose strands in front of the metal hoop, back through the loop, and then pull tight to secure. You're going to repeat that again with the remaining strings, so I'll show you one more time. Take your next string, line up the loose ends, find your way to center, which will have a loop. Take your loop over and behind your hoop, then take your loose ends in front of the hoop, back through the loop, hold down, and tighten. Now repeat that till you have six strings attached to your hoop. Next, we're going to create a row of three square knots. To form our first square knot, you want to pick up these four strings on the right. You're going to take the rightmost of those strings and you're going to cross it over in front of the other three. Then you're going to take this leftmost string, bring it on top of the one you just crossed, then take it behind the center two and up through this loop off to the side. Now hold on to your center strings while you pull the outer strings in opposite directions to tighten. Now to complete the square knot, we're going to do the opposite. So we'll take the leftover center this time, right on top of that one, behind the center two, up through the loop, and then tighten. That's your first square knot. You're going to repeat the same thing with the next four strings toward the left. Take your rightmost string, cross it in front of the other three, then take your leftmost string on top of that one, behind the center two, up through the loop, and then pull tight. Now do the opposite to complete the knot. Take the left string over the center, take the right string on top of that one, behind the center two, up through the loop, and then tighten. And form one final square knot with these last four strings to the left. Next, we're going to create a row of two alternating square knots. So we want to leave out these first two working strings on the right, then pick up the next four strings toward the left, and we're going to form a square knot. So once again, take right over center, left over that one, behind the center two, through the loop, and tighten. And then do the opposite, left over center, right on top, behind, through, and tighten. And now repeat that with the next four strings, and these two on the left will not be used. And now we're going to create one final square knot in the center. So two more strings on the right will not be used, two on the left will not be used, 
and we'll just be working with these four in the center to create one final square knot. Once we have this triangle of alternating square knots, we're going to create a diagonal clove hitch line on either side. So we need to attach another string to the left and another to the right using a lark's head knot, just like at the beginning. You're going to set this leftmost working string aside and pick up the next working string over, which is the closest to your square knots. This will come across at a diagonal as your filler string. The remaining six strings toward the center will form our knots. To make our first diagonal clove hitch knot, also called a half hitch knot, you're going to take this next string over to the right, which is situated behind your filler string. You wanna cross it over in front, around behind, through the loop, pull down, and then pull tight to the top. And now repeat, your working string is now off to the left, cross it over the filler string, around behind, through the loop, pull down, and tighten. And now we're going to repeat that with the remaining strings until we reach the center point. Pick up your next string, which is behind the filler string, cross it over, around behind, through the loop, pull down, and tighten and then repeat across the filler string, around behind, through the loop, pull down, and pull tight. Once we reach the center point, we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So leave out that rightmost working string, pick up the next one toward the left, and we're going to again create that diagonal line. So take your next string toward the left. It's behind the filler string right now, so cross it over in front, around behind, through the loop, pull down, pull tight. Now it's off to the right. Take it in front, around behind and through, pull down and pull tight. And then you're going to repeat that all the way to the center once again. Once we get to the center, we need to connect the two sides. So I'm gonna continue using this filler string from the right, and I'm gonna pick up what was the filler string on the left, and I'm going to form one final set of clove hitch knots. Now we're going to repeat this design all the way around the hoop. So what we need to do next is we need to attach another set of six strings using a lark's head knot. Once you have six more strings attached, you're going to use those to create a row of three square knots. Once you have three square knots complete, you wanna leave out the two working strings on the right and the two on the left and create a row of two square knots. And next, you want to leave out two more working strings on the right, two more working strings on the left, and form one final square knot with those center four strings. Now for this second triangle, we already have the string that will be our filler string on the left for our row of diagonal clove hitch knots. So we just need to attach one more string to the right using a lark's head knot again. So now using this working string that's between your two triangles, you're going to bring that across at a diagonal as your filler string and create a row of diagonal clove hitch knots coming to the center of your second triangle. Once you've reached the center on the left, you're going to form a row on the right. You're going to be leaving this rightmost working string aside and pick up the next one over, which is closest to your square knots, and use that as your filler string. And then use the remaining strings to form your knots toward center. 
Once you reach the center point, you're going to form one last set of clove hitch knots using the filler string from the other side to connect the point of the triangle. Now you're going to continue this pattern until you have filled up the entire hoop and used all 84 of your strings. Once you have your square knot and diagonal clove hitch triangles going all the way around your hoop, we're going to be working between the triangles. So what we're going to do is we're going to create what's called a berry knot, a macadamia knot, or a button knot. So you want to find the point where two triangles touch and then find the four centermost strings. Using those four strings, we're going to create a row of three square knots. So once again, take that right string over the others, left on top, around behind the center to and up through the loop. And then this time, instead of pulling your knot all the way tight to the top, you wanna leave about a quarter inch of space at the top, enough to feed a string through each of these holes. Now complete your square knot by doing the opposite, left on top of center, right on top of that, behind the center, up through the loop and tighten. Now using these same strings, you're going to create two more square knots right underneath this first one. And if you're making a series of square knots and you get a little lost and forget which string is supposed to be going on top, you can look at these little bumps over here on the side and whichever side has the bump, that's the one that goes on top. So once you have three square knots with your three bumps over here on the right, what we're going to do is take these center two strings and feed them through the corresponding holes at the top. So you wanna take this right center string up through this right hole, just fold it in half, push it through to the back, and then gently pull it through. And do the same thing with the left center string, you're going to bring it through this hole up here on the left, fold it in half, push it through to the back, and then pull down. And now take hold of those center two strings that you just fed through those holes and gently tug them as you push your square knots over into a ball. Now you're gonna take the two outer strings and you're actually going to help them around the side of this berry knot that you just created. And then you're gonna form another square knot underneath to hold that in place. And this square knot you wanna tighten all the way up under that berry knot so that you don't really see it. And you're going to continue that all the way around. Once all of your berry knots are complete, the last element of the design is to create two rows of diagonal clove hitch knots under each berry knot. So for the first row, what you want to do is you want to find the string that's to the left of your first berry knot. This is going to come across at a diagonal to be the filler string. These two strings toward the center will be forming your diagonal clove hitch knots, just like these knots we formed before. So just as a reminder, take that first string, which is underneath your filler string, cross it over in front, around, behind, and through the loop, pull down, and pull tight to the top. And now repeat, cross over in front, around, behind, and through, pull down, and pull tight. And now repeat with the next string toward the center. Once you reach the center, we're going to do the same thing on the opposite side. So take the string that's to the right of your berry knot that will come across as your filler string. And then you're going to use the next three strings, including the filler string from the other side to form your diagonal clove hitch knots. After you've completed the first row of diagonal clove hitch knots on either side and closed them together at the center, we're going to do a second row. 
So you're going to pick up the next string over to the left and you're going to use one, two, three strings to make your knots toward center. Once you reach the center, you're going to pick up the next string over to the right. That will come across as your filler string and you're going to use the next four strings to form your knots. Now you're going to repeat this underneath each berry knot. And I'll show Once your design is complete, you just wanna go around and trim all of the fringe. If you want, you can use a little piece of cardboard that you've cut to your desired length to help you as a guide, or you could use a tape measure, or you could just eyeball it, which is what I usually do. So you just wanna grab your strings in little sections along each diagonal and then I do about an inch or so for a project like this, and you just want a sharp pair of scissors that you can trim straight across with. And save your cutoff strings for smaller projects like earrings, ornaments, keychains. Um, and if you do any sewing, you can cut them into little pieces and use them as filler for stuffed projects. Once you trim all your fringe, you can either leave it the way it is, or you can take a fine tooth comb, either metal or plastic will work, and you can just go around and very gently brush the fringe to separate all the individual fibers of each rope if you wanna make this a little bit more fluffy. And just be very careful that you don't catch any of your knots when you're doing this, because you'll pull some of the threads out. If you plan on hanging this on the wall or your front door and you wanna make sure that your fringe holds its shape, you can just spray it with a little bit of fabric stiffener. So you just wanna follow the directions on the back. Cover your surface with some newspaper or cardboard to protect it from getting sticky. And make sure you open your window cause it's a little bit stinky. So you just hold it about six inches away and spray it all the way around on the fringe and then you want to let it dry and do the same thing to the back. Once your fabric stiffener is dry, if you want to, you can come in and clean up the fringe a bit and straighten it out or you can just leave it the way it is to give it a more natural look. Now if you want to hang this on the wall, you could simply just hang it on a nail. You can find one of these holes and just feed that onto the nail. Or you could take one of your cutoff pieces of string and you can just feed it through. I usually do the center hole of one of the triangles, fold that in half, push it through to the back. And then at the top, you just want to tie that into an overhand knot. And you can hang it from your door or the wall that way. I hope that you enjoyed today's tutorial and that you will give this project a try. Please leave any questions or comments below and please like this video and subscribe to my channel for more macrame and crafts. Thank you and have a great day.